What's up? I'm Coach Dalton here with Mathicists. I want to talk about triangles. I've been thinking a lot about them lately. And I can only imagine that that's how the writers of the SAT feel as well. Because, wow, they sure ask about triangles a lot, don't they? I want to skip all the basic stuff about triangles. Like, oh, the area is half base times height. Or, oh... This is what a right triangle is, and oh, the angles at up to 180 degrees. First of all, most of that information is easily gettable from that beautiful formula page at the front of the section, which you should be in the habit of checking every single geometry question anyway. I don't care how smart you are and how good you are at memorizing formulas, if you're not checking that formula page every single geometry question. And if you're not getting an 800 on the math, then you need to be checking that. Hey, you get an 800, I'm, I'll shut up. What I'm more interested in, in um, beyond the basic stuff, I'm more interested in the way the SAT is uh, adept at repackaging the basic stuff and presenting it to you in a way that makes it seem weird and makes it seem like something you haven't seen before. Notice the way I'm phrasing that. I'm not even saying the harder triangle concepts because that isn't really what we mean when we talk about how these math sections go from easy to medium to hard. On the SAT, it isn't like there's easy concepts at the beginning of the section and hard concepts at the end. Like, it isn't like, oh, on the first page, there's really basic algebra, and then on the last page, there's calculus. No. It doesn't progress in difficulty of concept. It progresses in weirdness of presentation you can get an algebra question on the first page and an algebra question on the last page of the section they're both algebra but the one on the last page is going to be presented to you in a way that makes you feel not so confident sort of destabilizes you makes you feel like you haven't seen a question like this before and maybe you haven't seen one that looks like that before, but you've certainly done questions like that a million times. Geometry as well. You can see geometry on the first page or on the last page of the section. It's not going to be testing more complicated concepts, geometrical concepts on the last page. It's just going to be presenting them to you in a weirder way. And I just want to go over some examples of the ways they might present these to you in a weird way. Just to sort of give you an idea of kind of how these test writers think, I believe. And um, let's see if we can get in their heads a little bit and maybe be able to recognize these traps before we fall into them next time, okay? So, right triangles, as we all know, the SAT is obsessed with right triangles, hopelessly. And what's the classic right triangle formula? You got Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared, blah, blah, blah. C is the hypotenuse, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, I'm not here to talk about that basic stuff, okay? There's plenty of videos that'll teach you what the Pythagorean theorem is. Also, Pythagoras may not even have existed. Unclear. What I'm more interested in are the Pythagorean triples. So these are shortcuts that you can use to circumvent the need to use the Pythagorean theorem. The classic Pythagorean triple is 3, 4, 5, meaning if two of the sides of the, uh, two of the legs, like not the hypotenuse, two of the legs of a right triangle are 3 and 4, we don't need to use the theorem. We just know hypotenuse is going to be 5. Boom. That's a thing. If you didn't know that, well, now you do. 3, 4, 5, boom. If I give you a right triangle, and the hypotenuse is 5, and one of the other sides is 4, you just know the other side's 3. Boom. 
you could use the Pythagorean theorem, but why? And when we can memorize 3, 4, 5, and it's so easy. 3, 4, 5, 3 consecutive numbers, integers, I'm sure you can handle that. But what may not be as obvious is that it's also the multiples of 3, 4, 5. 3, 4, 5 times 2. So 6, 8, 10. 3, 4, 5 times 3. 9, 12, 15. 3, 4, 5 times 4. 12, 16, and 20. 3, 4, 5 times 10. 30, 40, 50. And so on. Those multiples of the Pythagorean triples also are a thing. So you want to train your brain to recognize when we're dealing with those multiples of a triple. Take this example right here. Whenever I'm given a right triangle and I see that the hypotenuse, here it's 15, that's a multiple of 5. So already I'm thinking about 3, 4, 5 triangles. I'm already on the hunt for 3, 4, 5 triangles in general. And I see 15, that's a multiple of 5. Specifically, it's 5 times 3. Well, what's this side? 9. That's 3 times 3. This is 5 times 3. This is 3 times 3. So, that must mean this is going to be 4 times 3. In other words, 12. Looks like I didn't draw this triangle to scale, did I? Learn to recognize these Pythagorean triples, these multiples of Pythagorean triples especially. It's going to save you time. It's going to reduce the number of calculations you need to do in a question, which of course saves time, but also every extra step you do in a question creates more opportunities to make mistakes. Other triples are 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25. But to be honest with you, 3, 4, 5, and 5, 12, 13, if you have those memorized and you are looking out for the multiples of those, I think you'll be fine. Um, I want to talk about similar triangles next. Now, similar triangles, I'd like to make a whole video about similar triangles. It's another uh, obsession. That the SAT has. Basically what you have are two triangles where their corresponding angles are equivalent and their corresponding side lengths are proportional, meaning one of them is the scaled up version of the other one. Maybe one of the triangles each side is double the lengths of the other triangle or triple the lengths or 1.5 times the lengths. Something like that. Some consistent relationship there. But I don't want to go into more specifics about that right now. I want to talk about this shape over here. This like kind of pointy hourglass looking thing. Sometimes you might see it like this. When you see this shape, they are similar triangles. I just want to put that out there. I find that students are sometimes hesitant to think that triangles are similar because they are just not, they haven't proved it to themselves. Like, like, well, I wasn't sure if they were similar. I don't know if they're similar here. You see this shape? They're similar triangles. In fact, if you ever suspect two triangles are similar on the SAT, 99% of the time, they are similar. I don't want you to be wasting time trying to prove things to yourself that you already know in your heart true if you would just listen to your heart like i keep telling you to do in general and this isn't just about similar triangles or triangles or whatever on the math section if you're stuck on a problem but you think a certain thing about it might be true like for example the two triangles are similar or maybe the two sides are equivalent something if assuming that leads to you knowing what to do next in the question, then you should assume that. So you can move forward in the question. Because what's the alternative? You just stare at the question and waste five minutes and then guess and get it wrong 
and then move on, and since you wasted time, you don't have as much time for other questions? Is that your strategy? If you have two paths in front of you for a particular question, one path involves assuming something you don't quite know if it's true, and the other path is you don't know how to do it, but if you assume this thing in this path, you do know what to do. You should follow the path that involves you knowing what to do. I realize you're not sure it's the right thing to do, but it's something to try, right? You know how much I hate it when you say you have no idea what to do on a question, but really what you meant is you had an idea, you just weren't 100% confident it was the right thing to do. Well, on a test like this, the SAT, on it's timed as well. We don't have time to feel 100% confident about every single thing that we're going to do. And the test is designed to psychologically lower your confidence anyway. So how do we fight that? We fight that not by planning to be 100% confident, because we won't be. We fight that by deprioritizing the feeling of confidence and prioritizing doing some math on the page. <sighs> Next one, equilateral triangles. I bet you didn't know that equilateral triangles are usually secret special right triangle questions. Now, you look at that formula page, we see the special right triangles right there, right? 30, 60, 90. X, 2X, X root 3, right? Now, a basic special right triangle question that you'd find at the beginning of the section will label all the angles for you. So you'll just be so clear. Oh, here's a right triangle with 30, 60, 90 labeled. So I know it's a special right triangle, so I know what the side lengths are now. Now, a special right triangle can easily appear later in the section as well. They're just going to, instead of tell you flat out it's a 30, 60, 90, they're going to whisper to you that it's a 30, 60, 90. And equilateral triangles are one of the main ways they whisper that. Why? Well, equilateral not just only means the sides are equal, it also means each of the angles is equal, right? And what are the angles of an equilateral triangle always? Yeah, 60, right? 60, 60, 60. And do you even know that if you cut an equilateral triangle in half and draw that line straight down, you're creating two 30, 60, 90s. You can see why, right? In fact, what have I drawn just now? I've drawn the height of the equilateral triangle. That's why questions that are allegedly about the area of equilateral triangles are really special right triangle questions. That's why the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle has root 3 in it, which by the way, I don't even care about memorizing that. Just split it up into two 30, 60, 90s, and you'll be good. They also throw in root 3s and root 2s in all sorts of weird places. Sometimes they show up in the answer choices, sometimes they show up just in the question in some, in some weird statements. And the, the question may have not been obviously about special right triangles, but if they're tossing a root 3 or a root 2 at you, they're whispering to you that they're about special right triangles. The last thing I want to talk about is something that they do a lot when they're faking their way into pretending they've written a hard question, is they'll take an easy concept, once again, special right triangles, and they'll just go in the other direction from what we're used to. Here's what I mean by that. We're used to seeing the triangle with the angles marked, like I was talking about earlier, right? Oh, they told us the angles are 30, 60, 90. So I know what the sides are now. I know that the hypotenuse is going to be double the length of the shorter side. But they can also go in the other direction, right? Look at this one. Here's a right triangle, ABC. What if they had some way of telling us that side BC, this side down here, is half of the length of AC, the hypotenuse. Well, that's telling us it's a special right triangle. They just told it to us with the information 
on the other side. We're used to thinking of it as, oh, here are the angles, therefore I know the sides. Here they told us information about the sides. Therefore, we know the angles. We know this is a 30 degree angle. We know this is a 60 degree angle. It's just like that uh, sine of uh, one angle is equal to cosine of 90 minus that angle that we were talking about in a previous video. That goes in both directions too. If we know that two angles add up to 90, we know that sine of one angle equals the cosine of the other or the other direction. If we know that the sine of one angle equals the cosine of another, then we know those two angles add up to 90. Same deal here. We got to think two directionally when it comes to the SAT and their weird way of presenting things to us. And again, it isn't like the questions get legitimately harder. It isn't like the concepts get legitimately harder. They just get more, and I would even say slightly more, creative about the way they present to us the same old crap. Like this video, please, if you want to see more stuff like this, please drop me a comment if you have a request for a certain math concept you'd like me to talk about. Feel free to email me if you'd like to work with me, coachdaltonfoster at gmail.com. Check out my subreddit, Mathicists. See you later.